All right, hello everyone. How are you? It's Kay. So I hope you had a great weekend, and this is Monday, 11th of April. So uh, today I'm taking a day off. So I screen charts, and I see JPY has been very weak. So all JPY pairs are going up. But uh, for me, I don't take a trade. But uh, because I usually Mondays I take a day off uh, because uh, I had some uh, works. I had to do on Saturday and Sunday so usually Mondays I take a day off but today I would like to record a video quickly and upload at the 2 p.m. UTC today because uh, I just want to talk about one topic quickly which is about the risk management uh, so I actually picked up one of the comments on YouTube because I thought it's an interesting question to cover so based on that I will talk about it so, uh, yeah, let me change the screen. Okay, and as a quick, quick disclaimer, as usual, this is basically based on my own experience knowledge. So, when you decide to take trades, please do with your risk management. And also, since this is video or live, either way, uh, please, if you can follow the rules and guidelines on YouTube, that would be great. And also, recently, there are so many scams and uh, spams so in case you see see my fake accounts be careful i don't do telegram no te no instagram no facebook and i never send direct messages to anyone so yeah just be careful in case you receive them from someone else so uh yeah as i mentioned earlier today's topic is about the risk management because i happen to find one of the comments like this which is here. Let me post it here. Uh, can you see this? Um, this is from um, Nathaphon. He says, how many pairs we could take the position in the same time? So, I actually get these questions uh, a couple of times before. And in the live stream, I cover, I, I reply to these comments. But uh, in this video, let me specifically uh, answer why I don't use... I don't take multiple pairs at the same time. So, um, how many pairs we could take the positions at the same time? How many pairs? Uh, the, the, but the question should be the risk management. How much risk you want to trade, uh, you want to take per trade, is a more question. So what I mean is, uh, for example, let's see. Let me turn to trading view. So here is trading view. Here is. Uh, USDJPY daily time frame and it's bullish. The market is bullish and it's breaking the previous high from the 28th of March. But um, briefly touching this one, actually this is right now at um, 9, 9.39 UTC. So you see these are different time zones and uh, you can you exactly know which what time I'm doing this recording. But uh, yeah, so right now this is still in the midday uh, and the London session just opened but uh, USDJPY is strongly bullish because of the weak JPY and uh, briefly speaking, um, I can see that the Kumo is bullish, single span B is up, A is up and Kijun Sen is bullish, Tenkan Sen is also bullish and Chikou span above candles and it's breaking the previous resistance so in the long term i expect the market goes up continuously but the one thing is that this blue resistance level which is at 125.90 this is the resistance all the way back in uh, 2015 there was a long week high in june 2015 so the market is near that level and it might be reacted and retrace backwards. So you can still look for the buy chance and expect the market breaks as long as Kumo up, Kijun Sen up. But um, you have to be careful. Whenever the market retrace, you have to exit very quickly. So when you take a trade, you have to have good risk management. Otherwise, you might lose and you might lose big because uh, the market may reverse very quickly. So if you're not confident, then you don't want to trade, is my opinion. But uh, coming back to the topic about how many pairs you can take per trade, 
Let's say, so this is how I do. Let's say I take a buy on this USDJPY. Let's say I take a buy. I usually enter in 5 minute chart. And let me quickly check the 5 minute chart in price action. I can see that this is ascending P wave. The resistance are at the same level, 125.44, and the lows are higher. So this is ascending P wave. We can I can extend all the way to the past like this. Um yeah, like this, and the market is actually bullish. I can see that the uh so the highs are remaining the same levels, but the lows getting higher. So yeah, most likely the market breaks bullish is my idea in this case. But let's say I take a buy right now, expecting the market breaks, and the stop loss will be below the previous low in five. So when I enter here right now, then um, my stop loss will be placed most likely here, below the previous low in five. And in terms of pips to stop loss, I would take uh, 28 or 29 around 30 pips of stop loss considering spread and i will enter by and so once again let me recall the question how many pairs we can take the position at the same time so let's say if i enter right now i usually enter two positions but uh, if it's only one position then i take two percent risk percent to the stop loss so that uh, if the market reverses backwards all the way to stop loss, I lose 2% of my whole account is my risk management. And I never exceed over 2% for, uh, for, for the risk on trading on any pairs on all the markets. So if, I, if, I, if I'm risking 2% on this one, then I'm not going to trade on any other pairs. But uh, if I don't risk any more on this one, then I can take another 2% on some other pairs, is my opinion, is my strategy, risk management. So let's say the market is uh, market goes towards my direction afterwards. Let's say it goes up like this. It may bounce on the P wave, it goes up or breaks resistance straight and goes up this way. And at some point, I move this stop loss to break even above the pr above a position so that even if the market retraces backwards afterwards, I don't lose. So this is called break even. I used to call this as a zero line. Zero means zero risk line, but uh, in English it's break even, break even line. Slightly stop loss, slightly above the position when you buy. So once I set the break even, even if the market retraces. I don't lose. So now I'm taking 0%. I'm taking 0% risk. So I can go ahead and look for other uh, pairs to trade and take 2% on other trades. So my question, uh, sorry, my answer to this question is um, you can take as many as you want as long as your risk, whole risk is 2%. So let's say, so this is a bit practical. Um, let me just get this a bit more practical here. Let's say um, this is a bit advanced, but uh, let's say your stop loss originally was here. You put the stop loss and the market goes up. But let's say it doesn't go so much and it retrace backwards like this. In this case, what I do is, this is too early to set the break even because if I set that, like here, then um, the market might take the break even. And if I keep repeating this one, then uh, I might have too many break even trades and I won't be able to make profits. So in this case, what I do is, I move the stop loss not to break even, but below the previous low in 5, so that will be either here or here. I will most likely, in this case, I take here. And so that the, the pips, the stop loss in this case will be 21 pips, 22 pips, which is reasonable. 
So if I do this, then uh, originally it was 2% to stop loss originally was 2%. But here would be around 1%, maybe 1 point some, maybe 1.1 or 2% I'm risking. So, um, so I have another 0.8% room to take another trade in that tense. So if I see another trending pair, which is st strongly bullish also, then I can take technically another 0.8% on the other positions. Um, so because the point is that I only risk 2% on all the trades. I never exceed more than that, and that is my risk management. So uh, technically you can do that, but uh, for me, if I counted the break even line yet, then I will stick to this pair still. And I monitor and I wait until the market goes up gradually and then set the break even line. Yeah, otherwise I won't trade under pairs. So this is also another question like uh, how many uh, how many markets do you trade at the same time? And my answer is if I trade this one USJPY buy, and even after setting the break even, most likely I will just leave, and I will decide to do some other things than trading. Because I don't lose in this one in running profits, I continuously trial the profits along the way. So uh, usually I don't take another additional uh, positions. But uh, if you are willing to, then you can. After set the break even, you are risking 0%. This is 0%. So uh, if you see, let's say, pound JPY or pound AUD tripping trending, at the same time you can trade or you can you can enter another positions here on the same pair USDJPY and uh, buy here put the stop loss maybe here and uh, take the 20 pips and 2% risk again and follow and trail the profit along the way uh, sometimes I do that but uh, most likely after I set the break even I don't really do that unless the market's still very strongly trending because once again, I want to do some other things than trading when I see the when I set the break even line. But uh, so this is about the risk management, and this is a very important concept for the risk management. Uh, before, what I used to do is so I set the stop loss here, twenty eight or thirty pips of stop loss, and I was setting the TP. Like a, let's say one two three for example risk reward one two three, and I would take like a ninety pips of TP, this ninety pips will be all the way up over here. So I used to take I used to set the TP and stop loss when I enter the trade, and uh, just leave, and I did it, and sometimes it reaches all the way back to. All the, all the way to top to TP, but uh, most likely it doesn't reach in the market reverse, and I had to take profit at some point. Or um, the market reaches TP, but uh, if it's strongly bullish, it just keeps going up, and I feel I missed this opportunity here. Or the market just retraced backwards, and if it retraced backwards three times, then even if I take profit in 90 pips, that will be like break even. Three losses with 30 pips and one 90 pips win, and that's break even, right? So, um, so I decided not to leave chart until the market reaches either stop loss or TP. But instead, I now monitor the chart until I can see the break even. In that it's more submissive, but uh, very like uh, you can protect your asset, protect your balance, uh, your account. In this way, 
and uh, make sure that you can build up your uh, you know profits along the way in this way more safely and uh, yeah, safely in terms of uh, money in psychology. And this is the reason why I say my YouTube uh, purpose is to help you become a non-losing trader. So non-losing trader uh, requires lots of patience and lots of skills in risk management. And if you can become a non-losing trader, let's say if you become break-even trade for let's say one month to three months, then that means you have a good risk management. And if you keep trading that way, most likely you can make profits over time. But if you still lose, if you still can't be a break-even trader, then uh, you have to learn about the risk management. And I think th today's topic is uh, good timing to talk about that. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you liked it, please press the like button. And uh, I will see you on the next one. So uh, yeah, the new week has been just started. And this week we have many big news. So before you take a trade, make sure you check news. If there's a big one coming soon, then simply leave chart and come back after the news. Uh, or simply um, set the break even and go over the news. So uh, that's also the part of the risk management. So we have to be very precise and exact on what you should do in which condition that should be also written on your rule books okay so but once again thank you for joining and uh, thank you for watching the video and i will see you in the next one so until then please stay healthy and stay safe and stay gold bye bye for now matane thank you